You know what's crazy to me? ChatGPT has actually been on a heater recently. For those of you that don't know what that means, maybe you're a little bit older, that means that they're doing really well consistently. It's like being on a hot streak in a sport. I don't know. People don't know sayings. But regardless, this product has been on fire. And what I want to talk about is the new functionality that has been added to ChatGPT in the last couple months that I don't think people are talking about quite enough. First and foremost, I know there was a release recently where they talked about ChatGPT 01 and 01 Pro. And I just want to make some clear clarifications on what that actually is. So ChatGPT 01 Pro was released recently and it is a $200 per month plan. And on the surface, people are freaking out. Well, obviously I would be freaking out too because it's way more expensive. You can just get the team or the pro plan for $20, $30 a month and get pretty much all these capabilities except for the fact that 01 Pro has a larger context window, allows for unlimited voice in the advanced mode and has some basic better learning, or I guess I should say proficiency in some of these different tests that they've done. It's negligible in comparison to the change that happened from 01 preview to just general 01 now. And you also get unlimited 01 usage with that context window being larger. So when you note all of these things together, I think you'll just think to yourself immediately, I'm not using 01 Pro. But I will say, if you're somebody who uses 01 like nonstop, it is gonna be worth the money because the 128,000 context window may not be usable, but the nonstop usage of 01 is, and it will solve a lot of problems for you. And solving a lot of problems for you is a pretty cheap price at $200 a month, but you also can use 01 in the team or the basic premium version and you'll be fine for that much less $10 or I should say 10 X less per month with the 20 or $30 a month. So be it as it may, I'm going to talk about the two new features that have been out for a little bit, which is search and then canvas. Now you'll notice I actually can't really do much with canvas on the desktop app. If I type canvas this, I want to write a script for a SAS notion video. You'll notice it doesn't really do anything which is frustrating like i can't interact with the canvas right now over my desktop app and maybe it's just because my product's not updated accurately so you do have to go to chatgpt.com in order for this to happen and you'll notice there is in 4.0 the ability to use these tools which is either picture search and canvas so if i do search i can't use canvas important to note. so let's do search and you'll notice there's actually trending capabilities now. So this is the first update that's important. I can literally just click on uh, Taylor Swift and it will showcase some stuff about her. It'll actually add the favicons to the source results, which I think is awesome. And to my understanding, this is pretty much similar to Google's Gemini snippets at the top and is an improvement from what the previous search functionality was inside of ChatGPT. Because if you remember inside of ChatGPT before, you would have to like tell it to look up bar Dean.ai's features on their website. And it would search the web, but it's much better to just press the button so it doesn't mess with the prompt. And sure, there were these snippets before, but it's not nearly as effective. So if I click on sources, I really like the fact that I have all of these sources showcased and I know exactly where they're getting it from. Much improved from previous search functionality. You can do a lot of basic searches with it. You can improve what you're looking at pretty easily. And if I want to get into the next feature, it's going to be a little bit more advanced than what search is. Search is pretty obvious, right? You just look stuff up and add that to the context of what you're doing. I want to create a presentation on how chat GPT has improved over time versus products like Gemini. And sure, I can write canvas or better, I can just press canvas and it'll do it. And I'm not even sure whether the typing works well. It's just not worth that. And you'll notice pops me into a whole different like mini ChatGPT situation. So it's creating the prompt generated response. And as you'll note, making the slides real nice, being very thorough with me, appreciate it. And you'll see on the side, it says the thing that it always does, which is like, oh, thanks for making the prompt. Feel free to add anything else. Cool, right? And this is essentially, you can see the title is right here, the canvas. Like if I went back to this chat, you'll see this is kind of inside the chat itself. And if I open it up again, I can actually make changes to it as if it was like a Notion or Google Doc. Pretty cool. You can add things like italics, bolding, anything to that effect. If I want it to take this and do Ask GPT, could you ask a specific question or two of the audience? 
for the Q&A. It'll, as you see, start doing like a sub prompt and it's gonna work on the issue and try to expand the text. As you can see here, it says, which feature of AI do you think will be the biggest impact? And the, okay, cool, awesome. But ask as well on top of this is maybe if I go here to Canvas again, Canvas, can you take the presentation information and turn it into graphs? So now I'm gonna open up another one right here. Okay, so it seems like I have to be a little bit more specific. Let's go back out here, I press X. So I'm gonna say canvas, take this data below and turn it into visual graphs. Okay, it does not seem like it wants to listen to me. This is unfortunate, because if you take a look at some of these examples that are out there on the internet, people are getting it to be graph based, so. Please provide me with 10 information. I'm gonna to try to do the same thing and see if it works. And this is always the thing when a new feature comes out with ChatGPT, it's not that consistent in some respects. Okay, so let's try this exact thing. And I'm just being transparent here because I just wanna see if it works. So it searched on the web automatically because it makes sense for it to look it up, which I think is awesome now. Previously, it would just not reference the internet at all. So you can have it manually do it and sometimes it'll just do it. Also, if you haven't noticed, 4.0 is insanely fast now, which is just nuts to me. All right, so now let's try this again and go to Canvas and see if it does it correctly. Please turn this information into visual graphs. Yeah, see what the heck, it's just not doing it. Please turn this information into many visual graphs instead of text, what's that? Okay, all right, now I did it. I had to be specific, instead of text, I was doing it. Good old Python code. I think it's doing it. What the heck? As you can see, it's doing it. So maybe when it finishes, it does it. Okay, once the code's complete, I can then press run. All right. I'm kind of learning with you, people. There we go. Press run. Always run. Come on, do it. Do the thing. Do the thing. I want to see a chart. There we go. Look at that. Finally. So this is something that's been a thing in Claude, and it isn't as cumbersome to do it, but they've finally gotten around to making it happen. So as you can see, drug over death, drug overdose deaths have been on the rise in the United States, and alcohol use disorder has been down, which is good. But percentage of adults receiving mental health treatment, percentage keeps going up. And then marijuana users have gone up and alcohol users have gone down. Interesting data. This was all based on a couple prompts, and uh, if I change the code in the top, right? I could obviously use ChatGPT in other ways to get more code in here, and then it could run this code to show it. And I think that's awesome because you haven't really quite had the ability to do anything in this realm or make code turn into anything. Like I could actually ask ChatGPT for this entire section to change the data if I want to, which is a good idea for when I'm trying to show visuals to other people. And then when it's done running, I can take that. I could always save. So if I copy the image link and just paste that out, you know, obviously it's gonna be its own actual image and I can download it as well by saving the image as it's, or copy it and paste it out. All of these things are really convenient. I mean, it, I don't even know why I have to explain this to anybody. It, like, it's crazy we live in this world. I used to just talk about Notion or whatever the heck was happening where they like had groups. It, it, this is just a massive improvement from anything I've reviewed in years. So shout out to ChatGPT, shout out to Claude, shout out to Gemini. All of y'all are doing great. Keep it up, okay? And keep watching this channel because it helps me pay my bills. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate each and every one of you and we'll see you in the next video.